Hello students, welcome to the class. So in this class we are going to start a new topic that is capacitor. So in the previous classes we have studied regarding electrostatics and here we are going to study regarding capacitor. So anyhow uh, these are interlinked topics electrostatics and capacitor so let us see uh, what is capacitor what is the function of capacitor and what is capacitance what is capacitor and what is capacitance so let us see now so in the according to our previous classes we came to know that uh, uh, study of static current is called as electrostatics if you are studying regarding the uh, static currents then the topic that is called as electrostatics and we also came to know that if two charge if a medium is placed between two charged bodies that means if two charged bodies are um, Place it, place it with some distance between them if there is some distance between them uh, in between that uh, distance it is called as uh, medium so this medium may be air or maybe vacuum or maybe some insulating materials or like that so we came to know that there will be some dielectric materials also so the, we are having two charges so this two, this medium will experience a force of attraction or repulsion according to the charges now here you are having positive charge and negative charge so therefore this media will experience a attractive force that means whatever the uh, charge whatever the force in this medium that force is the attractive force so positive charge that means um, every there will be electrostatic field around the charges so this is positive charge so this is the electrostatic field with around the positive charge and this is negative charge so this is the electrostatic field around the negative charge so positive charge means the direction of the uh, field is like this and negative charge means the direction of the field is like this towards that means this is giving uh, the the force is acting on this medium is attractive force why because one is positive and another, ne another one is negative and this medium is having high insulating property so therefore it will not allow the electrons to move from one position to another position why because it is an insulating material but whatever the charge you are applying to this medium so that charge will be hold by this medium in a static form so that's why it is called as a this medium will be having some uh, charge so that is the static charge so the same thing if you go for the capacitance if you go for the capacitor so generally uh, the device which stores charge is known as capacitor so oh, the capacitor is called as the device which stores charge this is called as capacitor so here we can consider that this is a device which is storing the charge but without these bodies uh, without these charges it will not store the uh, charge so the total device that means the combination of two plates that means two charges and uh, and this medium the total device if this total function has done by a device so that device is called as a capacitor okay so that device means we are having a two plates one is the positive plate another one is the negative plate so we will place a dielectric medium between these two plates so therefore the charge will be stored in this dielectric medium so let us take this is the one charge this is another charge and this is the medium let us compare like this so simply we can say capacitor is a charge storing device and capacitance means 
the property of this material the property of this material for storing the charge or for holding the charge charge holding property is called as capacitance so how much charge it will hold so that is the capacitance of this capacitor so that is nothing but capacitance means it is the charge holding property so capacitance means charge holding property of a body right so this is capacitance and this is capacitor now we have, we know what is capacitor and what is capacitance so let us uh, discuss regarding this capacitor and its construction and its working so now capacitor i am talking regarding the capacitor so if any two conducting materials are separate now this is a conducting material and this is another conducting material so these two conducting materials are separated by an insulating medium or an insulating material i have placed it this is insulating material and these are the conducting plates that means conductors now these two conducting materials are separated by insulating material so this is known as capacitor okay so we can say this is a capacitor or condenser we can call it as condenser so that means two conducting plates that means one is positive plate another one is negative plate or two or negative plates or two or positive plates so two conducting plates are separated by insulating material so therefore this insulating material is having a capacitance property so therefore it will hold some charge so therefore it is called as a capacitor or condenser now a capacitor is a device which stores electrical energy in the form of electrostatic charge so that means whatever the electrical energy we are giving to these plates are holded in the hold in a form of static charge that means there will be no movement of electrons so in a form of static charge this material will hold the electricity in the form of electrostatic charge that means capacitor stores the electrical energy capacitor stores the electrical energy in the form of electrostatic charge the form of electrostatic charge right so here the conducting materials are called as plates so whatever the conducting materials we have discussed now so these conducting materials are called as plates conducting plates and let us take air is the insulating material this is the air air is the insulating material so these are the conduction plates so this is also another conduction plate so now i am giving a supply to these plates so i have placed a switch and i have placed a voltage source so therefore i am giving the supply with the help of a battery with a switch to these plates right now the conducting plates are called the conducting materials are called as plates of the capacitor so these are the plates of the capacitor and the insulating material is called as the dielectric so this is called as dielectric and this is the plates that means in a capacitor there are two terms one is the plates and another one is the dielectric so plates are conducting materials and dielectric is a insulating material so the conducting plates may be in the form of uh, either uh, circular or rectangular so the conducting plates may be in the form of circular or they may be in the form of rectangular the dielectric is a medium between the plates this is the dielectric 
this is the medium between the plates either it is any insulating material the most commonly used dielectrics are air mica paper ceramic so the mostly used dielectric materials are air mica paper and ceramic so these are the mostly used dielectric material between the plates so the commercial capacitors are generally classified according to the medium between the plates so, uh, according to the medium they are using the capacitors are classified so there are uh, air capacitors paper capacitors mica capacitors ceramic capacitors or electrolytic capacitors like that depend upon the dielectric material it is using so whatever the dielectric material it is using so the name has been given to that capacitor according to the dielectric medium if it is using air then it is called as air capacitor if it is using mica then mica capacitor if it is using paper then it is called as a paper capacitor so therefore uh, according to that we can say that there are various types of capacitors uh, like uh, there will be parallel plate capacitors spherical or cylindrical capacitor that means we are having rectangular shaped plates so therefore they are called as parallel plate capacitors or there may be cylindrical capacitors also which we will see in the induction motors and uh, our fans so they will be in the cylindrical form like this so either cylindrical shape or parallel plate capacitors <coughs> but whatever the type it is either it is a parallel plate capacitor or a cylindrical capacitor a, the most common thing is every capacitor will be having two conducting plates separated by an a insulating material or which is called as dielectric whatever the capacitor it is either it is a parallel plate capacitor or cylindrical capacitor in any type of capacitor the common thing is two conducting plates will be separated by a insulating medium which is called as dielectric right so here whatever the picture we have drawn that is the parallel plate capacitor and this is the picture we are seeing this is the cylindrical or spherical shape capacitor okay so whatever the shape it is the common thing is that capacitor symbol will be shown like this Capa the symbol of the capacitor will be shown like this that means two plates conducting plates separated by a medium so here this is the medium so this is these are the symbols of capacitors right now let us see how does capacitor store charge so we just said that capacitor will store the charge so let us see how these capacitors will store the charge. So our topic, how does capacitors store charge? So let us see. So we already know that a capacitor is having two plates capacitor is having two plates let us take these two plates are plate a and plate b so these two plates are connected across a voltage source or a battery which is having a voltage of v volts and this plate a is connected to the positive side So, and plate B is connected to the negative side of the battery terminals. And we are placing a switch here. So, we are placing the switch. So, whenever we are closing this switch, the electrons from plate A will be attracted by the positive terminal. So, that means whatever the electrons in this plate A will be attracted by this positive terminal of the battery and the electrons start accumulating on plate B. Now these uh, electrons will start here accumulating at point. So 
whenever we are giving the supply, the electrons from plate A will be attracted by the positive terminal of the battery. So the whatever the electrons which are present in this plate, A plate, so that electrons will be attracted by the positive terminal of the battery. So this will be attracted by the positive terminals of the battery. Why? Because electrons are having negative charge. So therefore they are attracted by the positive charge. Now Now, whatever the plate we are having, this plate A of the capacitor is deficient in electrons and thus it is positively charged. That means what happens here? The total now here the electrons are attracted by the positive charge and the electrons are now the electrons are accumulated by the B plate. So therefore the number of electrons are less in A plate and more in B plate. So therefore, due to the deficiency of the electrons in the A plate, this A plate is getting positive charge and due to more electrons in the B plate, so this B plate is getting negative charge, right? So the plate B of the capacitor has excess of electrons, that means more electrons, so therefore it gets negative charge and this gets positive charge. Now, the capacitor is said to be in a charged state. No? So, in this state, the capacitor is in charged state. So, this process of charging continues till potential difference across the capacitor plates become equal to battery voltage. So, uh, this uh, charged state will be there up to where our potential difference of the plates and the potential the potential difference between the plates and the voltage source is zero right so whenever potential difference across the capacitor plates becomes equal to the battery voltage when the capacitor is charged to the battery voltage v either if this capacitor is charged to v voltage the current stops to flow why because there is same potential so there is no potential difference so therefore now current stops flowing now if you open the switch the capacitor will be in the charged form only so like this capacitor stores charge that means so here here we can say that first we have given supply and we have given A terminal to the A plate and plus terminal to the positive terminal to the A plate and negative terminal to the B plate. So whenever positive terminal is given to the A plate, the electrons in the A plate will be attracted by the positive terminal of this voltage that means battery and in the same manner uh, whenever we have given this negative to this one, all the positives will be. So let us draw here two separate things. This is positive and this is negative. All the negative electrons will be attracted by positive terminal, and all the positive will be attracted by the negative terminals. So this is the working of uh, capacitor that means how this uh, capacitor uh, store charge. So once again if you see uh, here why this uh, A plate is getting positive and uh, B plate is getting negative. So whenever we have given the voltage so current will flow through the plates. So generally we say that uh, current is flowing means uh, uh, electrons will flow from negative to positive so uh, just we will uh, interactively 
electrons are having negative charge so therefore electrons will flow through the negative to positive so whenever uh, these electrons is flowing from uh, plate b so which is having uh, where we are having negative side so negative plate so in that uh, now these uh, b plate is having more electrons why because we have we have given supply to the b plate so therefore here b plate is having more electrons now this side we are giving negative that means electrons so therefore this is having more electrons so therefore this will get negative charge whereas a plate is having less electrons so therefore this is getting positive charge so like this two charges are uh, given to the a plate and b plate so now the medium in the medium it is having so whenever these electrons whenever this uh, excess of electrons and gets negative charge is equal to the amount to the positive charge of a plate so the capacitor is said to be charged that means so whenever this two become same that means whenever this b plate which is having excess of electrons and gets negative charge which is equal to the amount to the positive charge whatever the negative charge is equal to the amount of positive charge so then we can say that this medium is charged that means the capacitor is charged so whenever we remove the supply and if you give it to a load so then current will flow through to the load and the charge will be discharged so like this the uh, capacitor will be charged so if uh, switch is open the capacitor will retain the charge and this will be charged and recharged. Suppose if the charge on each plate A and B is Q coulombs. So A plate is having Q coulombs, B plate is having Q coulombs. The charge Q on each plate is directly proportional to the potential difference between the two plates. That means the charge is directly proportional to the potential difference between the two plates. So what is the potential difference? So positive and negative. If there is no potential difference, there will be no uh, flow of electrons. If there is no flow of electrons, then there will be no charge. Okay. So since capacitors have the ability to store charge, so this capacitor is having ability to store charge. So they are also a source of electrical energy. So that means now we have connected a load here. So supply now the load for the load supply is given through the capacitor. So we can say that this will act as a source. That means the charged capacitor will act as a source to the source of electrical energy so that can be given to some loads so that is regarding the how does capacitor store charge and next uh, let us see what is capacitance The ability of capacitor to store charge is known as capacitor. So that just we have said before only holding capacitor. That means the ability of a capacitor to store charge. That is its capacitance. To store charge is known as its capacitance. So just it is a property of a capacitor. So capacitance is a property of a capacitor to store electrical energy. So let us take the charge Q on each plate of capacitor is just we have seen before. Q is directly proportional to the potential difference between the two plates. Right. So that means we can write Q is equal to C into V where C is the we can say the constant constant which is known as capacitance of the capacitance of the capacitor Why? because it depends upon the capacitance right so q is equal to c into v so therefore c is equal to q by v right so c is equal to that means capacitance is equal to charge divided by potential difference charge divided by potential difference right so is the capacitance of a capacitor is also defined as 
the ratio of charge and capacitor to the potential difference between the plates is known as capacitance right so that means the ratio of charge to the potential difference between the plates is known as capacitance and the unit of capacitance is farads and the unit of capacitance is farads so but generally uh, farad is a very high unit so generally uh, the value of the capacitance will be in microfarads nanofarads picofarads that means the value of the capacitance is very very less so 1 microfarad is equal to 1 into 10 to the power of minus 6 farads 1 nanofarad is equal to 1 into 10 to the power of 9 minus 9 And pico means one to the other power of minus two. One pico farad. The capacitance value will be in the less, but mostly farad means it is a very very huge unit. It is a huge value. So capacitance. Finally, we came to know that capacitance is the property of a capacitor for uh, holding the electrical, for storing the electricity. now what will be the capacitance of a capacitor let us see uh, we came to know that capacitance of a capacitor is nothing but uh, holding capacity but let us see uh, how will be the capacitance will be in a capacitor so same thing let us consider two plates one plate a plate and b plates and each plate is having a cross sectional area of a meter square cross sectional area of a meter square this is a plate and b plate and they are separated by uh, dielectric medium which is having a thickness of which is having a thickness of some uh, d meters so this is having a thickness of some d meters like this this is the thickness so thickness of d meter and plate is having a cross sectional area of a meter square and dielectric medium is having a thickness of d meter and relative permittivity of epsilon or every dielectric material material have its own relative permittivity permittivity and let us take the potential difference which we have applied is v potential difference is v volt and the charge on each plate is positive q and negative q so now the flux density so flux density d is equal to we are having a formula q by a already we have seen coulombs per meter square and field intensity e is equal to v by d volts per meter so we know that d is equal to epsilon not epsilon r into e this is also a formula so now let us substitute e is equal to v by d here e is equal to v by d so therefore d is equal to epsilon not epsilon r v by d and substitute d is equal to q by a so therefore q by a is equal to epsilon not epsilon r v by d so we know that the ratio of q by a is called as a capacitance just so therefore we can write c is equal to epsilon not epsilon or v by d
So we can write finally C is equal to epsilon naught epsilon r divided by epsilon naught epsilon r into a divided by d. So by this we can say that the capacitance of a capacitor is directly proportional to area of the plates is directly proportional to area of the plates and is inversely proportional to the distance uh, thickness of the inversely proportional to the distance between the plates and directly proportional to the relative permittivity of the medium between the plates so thickness means here we can say it as a distance also why? Because if this is the thickness, this is the thickness of the dielectric medium. The thickness is nothing but the distance between the two plates. So that's why we can say that D is the thickness or which is also called as thickness between the two plates is also called as distance between the two plates. Okay? So therefore, capacitance is proportional to the area of the plates. Capacitance is inversely proportional to the distance between the plates. And capacitance is directly proportional to the relative, relative permittivity of the medium where epsilon naught is constant. We are having a constant value for epsilon naught so that we already know. Right? So, finally, we came to know that capacitance is equal to epsilon A divided by D, where A is the area of the plates and D is the distance between the plates, where epsilon is equal to epsilon naught epsilon r so the units of capacitance is farads microfarads nanofarads picofarads so that is the units of the capacitance so here um, So here in the formula, just a simple clarity, uh, uh, I want to give you here. So just we have discussed uh, D is equal to Q by A coulombs per meter square. This is the formula and uh, this is the formula for flux density and E is equal to V by D. This is the formula for electric intensity. This is electric flux density and this is electric intensity. And we know that uh, D is equal to epsilon naught epsilon r into E. So this is another formula. So this we came from uh, D is equal to epsilon E where E is equal to D by epsilon. So these are all the formulas we have seen in our previous classes. So from this, I am substituting E is equal to V by D. So D is equal to epsilon naught epsilon R V by D. And I am substituting D is equal to Q by A. So therefore, the formula become Q by A is equal to epsilon naught epsilon R V by D. Now what I am doing means, Now here, Q by A is equal to epsilon V by D. So just I am writing this formula as Q by V is equal to epsilon A by D. So just I have replaced here. Okay, so you can see here I have written uh, this formula as like this: Q by V is equal to epsilon naught A by D, where Q by E is nothing but C, and A by D. So area and this is the distance. So C is equal to epsilon naught 
into A divided by D. So therefore, capacitance is equal to epsilon naught epsilon or cross sectional area of the plate divided by distance between the plates farads. So this is the formula which we have studied up to now. And from this we are going to say capacitance is directly proportional to the cross sectional area of the plate. Capacitance is inversely proportional with distance between the uh, plates and it is directly proportional to the relative permittivity of the medium where epsilon naught is constant. right? So, like this, the capacitance will depend upon these factors. So, if a parallel plate capacitor uh, is there, now we are talking regarding the par parallel plate capacitor. Suppose the space between plates A and B is occupied by three dielectric of thickness D1, D2 and D3. So, we are studying regarding the parallel plate capacitors. Because we came to know that according to the shape, we are having parallel plate and uh, cylindrical capacitors. Now, what I am doing means I am taking a parallel plate capacitors. So, this is my one plate. So, these plates A and B. These plates A and B are there. In between these plates, I am having three mediums. So, one medium is epsilon R1 epsilon or 2 and epsilon or 3. I am having three different mediums epsilon r1, epsilon r2, epsilon r3 are the three different mediums between the plates A and B and uh, each medium is having its own relative permittivity epsilon r1, epsilon r2 and epsilon r3 and each medium is having its own thickness D1, D2 and D3 and each medium has its own potential difference B1, B2 and B3 right and in the same manner each potential difference is having its intensity E1, E2 and E3 electric field intensity E1, E2 and E3 now I have given uh, voltage So now we can say that here in parallel V is equal to so here I am having V1, V2, V3 so these three are in series V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 so V1 formula where V is equal to E into D where V is equal to E into D. So, V is equal to E1 D1 plus E2 D2 plus E3 D3. <coughs> and where E is equal to, they are having a formula. D by epsilon naught epsilon R where E is equal to D by epsilon so D is equal to epsilon naught epsilon R1 into D1 plus D by epsilon naught epsilon R2 D2 plus D by epsilon naught epsilon R3 into D3 so, where D is equal to epsilon naught epsilon R into E. So, from this formula, E is equal to D by epsilon naught epsilon R. I have substituted here. Now, D and epsilon naught is constant. Flux density and in series flux density will be same. So, therefore, D by epsilon naught is constant. So, remaining terms is D1 by epsilon R1 plus D2 by epsilon R2 plus D3 by epsilon R3. Right. Now, I am having a formula. According to that formula, D is equal to Q by A. I am substituting D is equal to Q by A. So, therefore, V is equal to Q by A epsilon naught epsilon divided by d1 epsilon r1 plus d2 epsilon r2 
plus d3 epsilon r. So I have substituted d is equal to q by a. So just I am bringing this q this side. So therefore v by q is equal to 1 by epsilon naught a remaining thing is same d1 epsilon r1 plus d2 epsilon r2 plus d3 epsilon r3 and v by q is nothing but we know q by v is capacitance so v by q is equal to 1 by capacitance so we know that uh, capacitance is equal to q by v so therefore we can write here v by q is equal to 1 by c we can write but let us see epsilon naught a divided by plus d3 by epsilon r3 so the ratio q by v is called as capacitance so therefore c is equal to So therefore I can write C is equal to epsilon naught A divided by D1 by epsilon R1 plus D2 by epsilon R2 plus D3 by epsilon R3. So just here I have written V by Q that is nothing but 1 by C but I have written formula for C here, right? So C is equal to epsilon naught A so just I have interchanged the numerator and denominator both sides so therefore I have get a formula C is equal to epsilon naught A divided by D1 epsilon R1 plus D2 epsilon R2 plus D3 epsilon R3 so like that I can calculate the capacitance and in general C is equal to epsilon naught into A divided by summation of D by epsilon R. So here I have to write Q by A. So Q by V directly I have right here. So just one second I am explaining here. What is the misunderstanding just we have seen. So just we came to know that V by Q is equal to 1 by epsilon naught A into D1 epsilon R1 plus D2 epsilon R2 plus D3 epsilon R3. But according to our formula, C is equal to Q by V. So just what I am doing, just I am writing the inverse for this. I am writing the inverse for this formula. So inverse means Q by V is equal to this inverse is this epsilon naught will become upside epsilon naught A divided by 1 into this one. That means D1 epsilon R1 plus D2 epsilon R2 plus D3 epsilon R3. So like this, after writing the inverse for this, that means I want Q by V is equal to C. So therefore, I can directly substitute C here. So just I have written inverse for the formula. 
then the formula has become like this so finally c is equal to we can directly write epsilon not a divided by so all those things d1 by epsilon r1 plus d2 by epsilon r2 plus d3 by epsilon r3 so that's we have to understood that thing so like this we have calculated the uh, we can calculate the capacitance in a parallel circuit if any different uh, mediums are given so this is regarding the parallel plate capacitors which are having three different mediums between the plates so i think uh, we can stop here and uh, we will do some problems in the next class regarding the capacitance and after that we will see what are the types of capacitors and we can see capacitors in series capacitors in parallel okay so up to now this is our class so thank you students so we'll meet in the next class